So guys, I will be discussing one of the important topic. It's all about the overloading methods. What exactly overriding is all about? I have the method. I'm using the keyword called final in front of the keyword called class. Finalizer is taking the responsibility to collect back whatever the memory that we have allocated. Hello everyone, I welcome all of you to the yet another interesting session in object oriented programming with Java. So guys, what is that I have in the session? So let's understand that with the agenda. So guys, I will be discussing one of the important topic. It's all about the overloading methods. In the previous sessions, I have discussed what exactly the method overloading, but there is a change in this that is overriding. So what exactly this is? Is this overriding or overloading? So please observe carefully. So this is overriding. All right. So I will be discussing that in the next slide. So please make a note on that. So the next one that I have is final variable and methods. So what exactly is this final variable and final methods? So it's again an interesting topic. So I will be discussing that in the next one. Finalizer methods and abstract methods and classes is what I will be discussing in this session. So guys, let's get into the session without wasting much of your time. So the first one that I have is overriding the methods. Let me give you a simple example. Let me explain this concept with a simple example. What exactly overriding is on about? I have the method. Okay, I have the method. So what I can do with that method? So I will be changing the meaning or the functionality of that particular method. So that is what I will be calling it as a overriding. Say for example, I have the method and the method is performing some function. So but what I will be doing is I will be changing the functionality of that particular method. So that process is what I will call it as a overriding. That method is what I will call it as a overriding. Sir, let's take an example. I have plus. What is that I have? I have plus. Usually what exactly this plus is doing? So this plus is performing addition. Yes or no? Yes, this plus is performing addition. So plus is a method, let's understand, but it is performing what? Addition. So let me change the functionality of this plus. That plus will remain as it is, but it will not perform addition, it will perform subtraction. So this is the concept of overriding. That's what you need to understand. The same case will happen even with the methods. When it comes to the concept of superclass and the subclass, what happens is I have already defined a method. Say for example, my method name is display. I have a method that method name is display in the superclass, but when I implement the subclass, the subclass in the subclass, I will also have the method called display, but whatever the functionality that I have in the super class, I will change it in my subclass. So that is what I will call it as a method overriding. That is what I will call it as a method overriding. That's what you need to understand, my dear darlings. All right, moving forward to the next concept that I have, final variable. I think if you just understand or if you just look at this variable, you will be able to understand what exactly this final variable is all about. Uh, in this session, the first thing that you should keep it in your mind that what exactly this uh, concepts, whatever I'm related, you know, discussing, it's all related to the superclass and the subclass. What exactly is that? So listen to me carefully. So I have the variable, so that is size. Size, I'm initializing it to 100. So what happens? The value of that variable can change in any moment if I'm using the concept of inheritance. So the value that I have in the super class can be something and the value that I will be initializing it to that variable in the subclass can be something, all right? I can change, but I don't want it to change. I want it to be fixed value. I don't want it to change it. So if I want to do that, what is that I can do? I have to use a modifier called final. I have to use a modifier called final. If I use the modifier called final before the data type, so guys, that variable value will remain unchanged. That's what you need to understand. 
So after this, you cannot do the modification for this variable. That is what you need to remember. In the same way, guys, so the next topic, what I have. So please observe final class. When it comes to the final class, even here also, even in this concept also, I'm using the same modifier, but not in front of the data type, but in front of the keyword called class. So please observe, I'm using the keyword called final in front of the keyword called class. So what is that I'm doing here? The keyword final is making the class final. So it means to say that there is no more modification. So you cannot update or you cannot do any modifications there. Even if you override, so there is no possibility for the inheritance. So that is what you need to understand here. I cannot inherit further. So that is the final class. So there is no more modification. You have to use it as it is. If you want to you know, inherit or if you want to use it as a subclass and if you want to implement something else, no, there is no scope for that. You have to use it as it is. So that is the keyword speciality that is final. So that's what you need to understand with respect to the variable and with respect to the class. I said when it comes to the variable, so the value of that variable is final. So there is no change. When it comes to the class also, whatever you have in that class, you have to use as it is. So you cannot do any modifications further or you cannot inherit that class to the next level. So that's what you need to remember with respect to the final keyword. So fine. So you have understood this, both the things. What is the next thing that I have? So please observe finalizer method. What exactly this finalizer method is all about? If I want to execute, I need resource. What exactly you are calling it as sir? So resource in the sense, I mean to say that it is memory. It can be memory mainly. So fine. If I want to execute some class, I have to allocate the memory for the object. Yes. So whatever the resource that you have allocated for that object. So after the execution of execution of that particular object. So I have to reallocate. Is it? No, I have to deallocate the memory or the resource, whatever you have allocated for that particular object. Yes or no? Say, for example, I'm giving you the pen. You don't, you, you say, you, you will tell me, sir, give me the pen. I, I have uh, no pen with me to write the notes. Yes, you take it and you start writing it. So once you're done with my class, what you will be doing? So you have to return back that pen to me. In the same way for the object, you are the object here. I'm giving you the memory. So once you're done with the execution, what is that you have to do? You have to return it back, so, but you're not doing it. So for that reason, I'm keeping some guy. So who is that guy? That guy is a finalizer. So finalizer is taking the responsibility to collect back whatever the memory that we have allocated for that object. So that is the speciality of finalizer methods. Probably you would have come across uh, in the C++ concept that we had a concept called constructor and destructor. So what is the role of destructor? Could you please go back and check? Yes, the same thing. Okay, we, whatever we have allocated, so we are deallocating. So we are collecting all the garbage collection. In fact, we also call it as a garbage collector. What exactly garbage collector? It is not only that whatever we have allocated, whatever the free memory chunks that we have. So all those things, I'm collecting it back with the help of the finalizer methods. That's what you need to remember at this point of time with respect to the finalizer methods. Fine, moving forward to the next concept that I have. So I have abstract methods and class. You need to remember one thing if I say the word abstract. Abstract in the sense, there is no implementation at all. So that's what you need to remember, okay? So here, even in the class, are you all, uh, do you all able to see any implementation here? No, I'm just using the keyword called abstract. So here, for this class, to make this class as abstract, I'm using the, I'm starting with a keyword called abstract. The same way I have the method to make this method as an abstract method, I'm using the keyword called abstract. So what is the meaning of abstract? Sir, nam tale ne abstract, sir. What is the meaning of it, sir? Nam tale olge, nam tale olge ena dro idhya, sir. Eno illa, sir. Hadne abstract anta karitri, sir. The same way, so if you have any implementation inside the class, then you will not call it as abstract. If you don't have any implementation inside the class, then you will call it as a 
abstract class. Same way in the method also. That's what you need to remember with respect to the abstract methods and class. Some of the important points that I need to remember with respect to the abstract. Let's uh, check that abstract classes and methods. The first one that I have is we cannot use the abstract class to initiate the object directly. That is the first thing that you need to remember. I cannot do that. All right. So the second thing that I have is so please observe. Here I have uh, created the abstract class for this subclass, whatever I'm creating. So there itself, I have to implement, I have to define it. So what exactly that class and the method should do. So that is what I have to do it in the second one. When it comes to the third point, we cannot declare the abstract constructor. Please remember, I cannot have the abstract constructor. What is the meaning of constructor? Constructor will initialize the values automatically whenever the object is called. So guys, I cannot do that with respect to the abstract constructor. I cannot leave the constructor empty without doing any implementation. I have to implement. So that is what you need to remember with respect to the abstract constructor. All right. So this is all about the three important things that we have mainly touched in this session. So this completes uh, this chapter is what I would like to tell you. So in the next session, I will be coming up with a different chapter. So please stay tuned if you have liked the topic. So please don't forget to click on the like button and share it with your friends. It will help everybody. Thank you everyone.